you have to think outside of the box in order to hack. The stereotype is someone, you know, hacking the mainframe and transferring funds from your bank account to their pocket. But traditionally, it's meant more of someone who's interested in poking and prodding with computer software. And you have the idea of hats, all right? So uh, I mentioned the malicious hackers before. They're typically known as black hat hackers. Obviously, these are folks who are doing uh, illegal stuff. And so on the other end of the spectrum, you have white hat hackers, all right? And these are, they're hackers that are hacking for good reason or hacking with permission. So uh, a lot of times they're doing what's called penetration testing, where a company will hire hackers to hack their own company to test out the security measures. And in between is someone who, you know, no one really asked for. You can think of a gray hat hacker like uh, Batman where it's not, he's not really a, a policeman and he's not really a criminal. He's somewhere in between. And so it's, it's really debatable whether or not gray hat hackers are good or bad. So that's cool. Now, how does it all work? So ultimately, it comes down to a vulnerability being exploited. In a worst case scenario, a hacker is actually creating a backdoor to the system that you're not even aware of. So they have access to your system. And ultimately, they want to deliver a payload. Now, in a lot of cases, the payload is some type of malware. So some of the methods are brute force. That's where uh, essentially a hacker is trying to, to figure out uh, someone's password. And they have tables to help them. It's a, lot of, it's a lot like back in World War II with the Allies and their Enigma machine trying to crack the code. Yeah, that, that's essentially what a brute force attack is. And there's man-in-the-middle attacks, which a lot of times you see in a public situation on a public Wi-Fi. So say you're over at Barnes & Noble. Just be aware of what you're doing on a public Wi-Fi connection because there's people who will actually put a phony Wi-Fi up and, and you'll actually be connecting to them or they'll somehow intercept your communication to the public Wi-Fi and... Just don't do any of your banking on a public Wi-Fi, no matter where it is. And, you know, there's quote-unquote hackers who will root through trash cans to get information to hack uh, a system that um, was somehow associated with it. So, so be aware of what you throw out. And one of the biggest ways that people get hacked is through what's called phishing, which is a form of social engineering. And this is where... Uh, usually it's an email message that prompts a user to click on something and that click is their downfall. So always make sure you know what you're clicking on and um, don't uh, be very cautious with the emails you receive. And I'm going to be talking a lot more about this um, in another video when I talk about malware. So that, that's all I'm going to say about this for now. But I will say it's a good idea to have an antivirus uh, program, or I, I should say an anti-malware program. I like Avast. It's free. It's a good free option. And go ahead and turn on your firewall. It's a good way to, to block some incoming connections that may be malicious. And yeah, it's a good idea also to have a VPN because that'll encrypt your connection, especially if you're on a public Wi-Fi. I can't recommend getting a VPN enough. Uh, usually you have to pay for these, but it, it's worth the money. And usually it comes out to, uh, you know, like you know, three bucks a month or something like that. All right, so those are some pieces of advice to help you avoid getting hacked yourself. So have a great day.